in cahoots with everybody. They got there. I'm the only one that got out, uh, and nobody trusted me once I got out. So it was a funny double twist of Pluto energy. So, anyways, I left there, and I went from there to live with lived in the in what led the Yemenis around some with some Indians. It wasn't even Spanish. It was mostly Mazatecan. But I lived in a I got a hut on a mountain by myself. I left the companions I was traveling with. They got another mountain top, and they had a house, a roof. I wrote about a into a cabin on a house, but I was really alone on this mountaintop, and um, I stayed there four or five weeks, and then I walked from there to Veracruz. So um, then, after working with the fishermen of Veracruz, I came back. This is all during the second, the second phase. Um, I had um, I finally went hitchhiked back across North America, back across Mexico. Got to LA, San Francisco. When I got to San Francisco, it had changed from being the city of love to just being full of violence, angers, bikers. It was really horrible. It was a horrible place. And then at the same time, I found Jackie, who I'd been looking for since I came back from Canada, and she had become a junkie. I was so devastated, I couldn't even fathom that she would do that. And so I left and went for Canada, devastated. And I visited Prabhupada one more time at the temple by the park. And this was all as came up to the visiting probe, getting the devastation was still the last parts of the Pluto. And then it conjuncted the Mercury. And that's when I visited Prabhupada and I started traveling. I left California. I came back up to Vancouver and Calgary and, um, and Toronto and Montreal. So coming back to Montreal. And that was that whole phase. So uh, it's hard to see the personal relevance of these things when you're doing, I've taken objective time rather than right now and that, but I thought it would be more dramatic and more appropriate for this. We started it, so I'm following through with it. So when we're looking at the second place, one does not hold back and does not move. Difficulty surface. Since one has no direct influence, one does not presume. Someone breaks away and does their own thing, let go. Many, uh, the way of the many will prevail. I had to let go of Jack. You had to let go of place because I just didn't fit into those places anymore. Since here in Kong, no one is diminished. In the midst of difficulties, one holds to virtue, the foundation of integrity and seeds of success. These were the themes going on. I see them within these stories at the time. <clears throat> I was using the Ching in those times, but I was throwing hexagrams and getting the answers from them at those times rather than having a seeing how it's aligned to the zodiac. So then um, it goes to the third line, and the third line, we're between 14 to 15 degrees of Scorpio. We're in this modesty line three. Firm and resolute, there are many problems. One is surrounded by incompetence. One maintains self-reliance and works silently to solve the problems of others. One claims no reward. Receptive to the needs of others, one does not judge, but gives help wherever it's needed. Mindful of duty, one does not let difficulties increase. One step at a time, no one is threatened. One does not overreact and will be trusted. Okay, so this is the last phase taking me to India, taking me away in my leaving. The, I had gone back to Montreal, I had no money, but I, I got a job. I got a job, I found a place and I got a job and I was working at the World's Fair. And this, this one had gone deeper into, this is the deeper one, so I'm not going that deeply into it right now. But um, I, I, I basically I worked for two or three months at the World's Fair. Then I left there. I got a ticket on a, on the last well, not a tourist boat, just on the last um, just um, a tra a, tra a tra just a boat that was carrying some business stuff over. It wasn't really. It was only rooms for four passengers other than the captain. So. Um, it was in the winter. It was the last boat getting out of the St. Lawrence for the winter. So we got out of there and I got to, I went across England, across Europe, across our Turkey and Iran and got into India. And I, went, I met the person that was in the back into these silence rooms, went into the room for once for 11 days. I came out and I was sent to another place. I went in for another 90 days, 98 days. I spent time in that 98 days alone. I went from 65 pounds, went from 120 to 65 pounds. So I lost 65 pounds. I was so skinny, I was almost dead, but I felt great. And then when it finished, I was taking the, I came out and I wanted to go further, but they 
people around these rooms where these cave type rooms were telling me I had to stay up for a while and get some lead on before I go back into the room again. So I was in that phase for a month and I was taking, took a train down to Southern India where the next phase began, where I went into these rooms again. But this was this whole period of this last phase. Um, I didn't have the craziness of San Francisco and the craziness of all the hippie things, but I still didn't feel I fit into the family. It wasn't judging. I didn't feel I fit in anywhere. And everywhere I went, I felt there were problems. I didn't feel I belonged there. I didn't have jobs. I didn't belong anywhere. I was just wandering through. But really, I was being pulled to India, looking back now. Okay, so once we get through this phase, that's the first three, hexagram first three lines. This is a general thing. We're going to go deeper into this, but I want to see the second phase is the, where the hexagram changes to what's called the one called standstill stagnation for three years. Standstill stagnation. I don't like the name for it now, but really it's um, it's the onset of winter. You know, like just the end of the fall, everything's dying. And I'm just going to look through it here. Okay, here we go. I just got a new mouse, so it wouldn't be beeping anymore while this is going on, but this mouse is moving so fast, I'm not used to using it yet. Okay. I don't know any better way to show you than to just say how it was. So it changed from this modesty. I went into, I got to India, I went around the world, had no money, no way getting back. I think I got in, I met these people ran these silence rooms, but this man who just spent 11 months in one of these rooms, he says, you want to, it's there, would you like to try it? And I said, sure. So I did 11 days alone. And then I did 90, I went, and then he sent me down to that part of India where his guru or teacher was, and there was a number of rooms. He sent me there, and I went into a room there, and I spent 98 days in these rooms, in this room. So those were really intense periods of coming into this type of discipline, or to, you're chanting when you're being alone. So it was chanting and being alone, and um, so this next phase, I came out and I knew I had to, I'd done three months, I accomplished a great thing, a big thing, but I knew I had to go further, I hadn't completed, and I had this urge I had to go further, I had to go into this room again. So this urge I had to go through again, this is the beginning of the standstill stagnation phase. So for the next year, better part of the next year, I spent sitting in this room. From out, all outer perspectives, it was standstill stagnation. I did nothing in the world, I didn't have a job, I didn't work, I didn't do anything, I just nothing, I sit in that room being alone. Inside the room, I was busy chanting 24 hours a day or trying to chant all the time. And if I stopped, I had to consider again. I had to go. I had all sorts of things I was going through, but they meant nothing to anybody else. It was just internal struggles. So here's the meaning of the hexagram. But this is a good example of uh, when it was made for divination. They have a negative extreme standstill stagnation, and then they're going to explain it. But really, in the seasons, it represents the dying of the summer. And the beginning of the winter and what's having to adjust and align to that winter's coming in. So it's the beginning of the darkest phase of the year. So heaven above, earth below, light above, darkness below. Strength without, receptivity within. One does not force one's way, but takes advantage of the moment when it arises. One will act independently only after everyone else is taken care of. It will often be difficult to find time for oneself. So this is the theme. Well, I remember I being alone, I all the time for myself, but I didn't fit in, I had no money, other people were paying for it, other people I didn't know, things were being taken care of, but still, well, I didn't force it, it was offered, I took, and that was the beginning of these, and it was, even in the new, sending me to another place, because some people knew about it, there was creating some political distractions, and that undue attention, and so that I could maintain my privacy, they sent rings to send me down to South India to go into the next stage of this journey. The meek will, the image, the meek will inherit the earth. Everyone has their place. If you are too forceful, you will be left behind. Do not distinguish yourself. The way of the mother is on the rise. Contemplate the situation. Understand the circumstances of others. The act, action for the need of the group is good. Well, I was not in touch with the group at all. It was like I traveled around the world. I didn't fit into any group any which way. And it was the reverse side of this, the haunting side of this that pulled me into myself to see if I can find something inside, maybe I could be involved a bit better again, or have something meaningful. Act with the judgment, act without, passive within. Strong individuals within a group. A chain is only as strong as its weakest links. If the stronger is self-interested, 
and do not protect the weak, that community will not survive. Personal vulnerabilities will affect outer performance. If one considers inner sensitivity to be weakness, there will be cause for regret. Well, I certainly felt my inner sensitivities were a weakness around the world. I don't fit in here, I don't fit in here, I'm too sensitive, I'm moving away from here. I went around the world on that thing when I'm sitting in this room working on this issue. For the pentads, freedom of the mother, the power of togetherness, responsibilities first. One takes one's moments when they come. The demands made by others can feel oppressive. Do what is required and not what is desired. One cannot satisfy everyone. One not, can, cannot do everything. It is enough to be reliable. Smile and the world smiles with you. Frown and you frown alone. When during this phase, really, it's all talking about the group. Well, really, there was a whole group taking care of these rooms. It was a whole ashram, a whole group taking care of it. But it was an anti-social ashram. You go be alone, then you leave. You don't stay on the ashram. It wasn't a social thing. But it took a whole social network of people to hold this together. And they, they made room for me to be able to be in there. So from the modesty but being the mountain below the earth, I was just somebody and I was keeping still here, going there, going there. And I was receptive to all sorts of people. I wasn't exactly fitting in anywhere. I ran in until I started running into real darkness and I had to pull away from it. And that that was the catapult that flew me to go towards India or deeper things. Now, also at this point, it went up hexagram lines, what, 15, line one, two, three. Now it's going to hexagram 12, standstill stagnation, line three, two, one. So it starts at line three and goes down to the line here. Three, okay, here we go. So the first line for 68 to May 69, to July 69, really that's the whole year I spent. I spent this whole year in solitude without seeing another person. And during this time, the progress time can jump my Mars. So there's a powerful thing happening in this whole time that I was being alone. It was not passive. There was really strong, powerful forces. Do I stay or do I go or what am I doing in there? So I was really fighting to overcome the darknesses and the fears that happened from when I hit the Mercury and the Pluto. But here, third. The first part, one's energy is dissipated, distractions multiply, one sees what should be done but does not do it properly. Well, I'm, I'm not in a room, I'm going in, but um, return to what is needed and not to what is wanted. A step in the right direction will make a big difference. For me, the right direction was going in. Excessive demands, one is not in a position to contend, receptive to the insensitivity of others, one meets strength with humanity. Though inconvenienced, one will try to help. Well, that's a theme about trying to help us this team spirit time, but I'm in the middle of a group and team. I'm living up to their ideals, but I'm really just in there for myself, trying to work through something. So there's two sides. One side I was oblivious to, but when we look at my history during this year, oops. Okay, here we go. Look at the history of this year. Um, I'm in the solitude, really, the whole time. It's just, what is there history? There's no history. I spent the whole time in the solitude room until July when I came out just at the end of this phase. I, the phase ended uh, July 7th, and I came out of the room on July 20th. So I knew I was going to come out a little bit before I knew the time was finished. So this is this theme of these hexagrams. So I'm just going on. I want to go through, I want to strike these levels, these layers up. And really, I don't want to, I'm spending a lot of time in this first level. I want to spend more time in on the deeper levels because they're far more amazing. Um, okay, so we get to, when it goes on 69 to 70 the next year, after spending a year totally alone, second place. 